Okay, hi everyone, I'm Oliver Lees, I'm the Digital Marketing Manager at Space 48. Hi guys, I'm uh, John Woodall, uh, Managing Director of Founders of Space 48. So, first of all, who are we then? Um, well, Space 48, we're an e-commerce agency based up near Manchester, so excuse the accent if it's coming across or start speaking fast, just tell us to slow down. Um, we're an e-commerce agency, uh, in terms of how we're made up, uh, there's 30 of us in total, uh, around about 17 developers I think there is, so we're quite strong from a technical point of view, um, account managers, project managers and a small marketing team as well. Um, we uh, Magento Gold Partners, one of only 12 in the UK, so we quite a real focus on just developing on Magento as a platform and stick to, stick to what we know really well there. Um, we're also a Google Partner as well, so we tend to look for businesses that we can help from both sides. Of things where you know usually there's an, quite an entrepreneurial owner who's got ambitious growth plans and we can come in and work alongside people like Dot Mailer as well to, <coughs> to help them deliver an effective uh, growth strategy with their e-commerce. Um, we've won a couple of awards for some of the work that we've done which has been nice so hopefully that uh, says a little bit that maybe we know what we're talking about. Um, and here's a few of the clients that we've worked with. Um, so just a couple of brands all based on Magento you know we've done many different things from uh, e-commerce development, obviously developing the Magento platform, but providing the strategy and the consultancy that sits behind that as well. So, what are we going to talk to you about this evening then? Um, well, we're going to talk about some e-commerce PPC strategies that we use at, e uh, at Space48. Um, you know, helping helping our clients stand out from the crowd in a, you know competitive environments. That's a, a key part of what we do, and we're going to give you some of our tips and insights uh, that, that we use to help our clients. And hopefully, um, you know, with the analytical approach that we do have, give you some really good takeaways that perhaps you'll be able to uh, use back on the projects that you work on, or even pass on to other people that you work alongside. Cool. Okay, so first tip that I wanted to talk about was a granularity in Google Shopping Campaign. Um, hopefully a few of you know um, Shopping Campaign rolled out late in August, September of last year um, and replaced product listing ads. And essentially what that allowed you to do is um, get more granular with the account, interrogate your merchant centre feed more effectively um, and, and ultimately produce better results through that, through that communication. Um, so what we still tend to see, even though that's rolled out, is that we still sometimes see, believe it or not, that someone puts in an all, a single bid bid for all products that they have in their account. Obviously, that's not that's not granular if it's not really kind of approaching the uh, the vast state that skews that you have in your list by just having one bid to try and cover every product. Um, and then even taking it a slight step further, if you're a retailer of multiple brands, people might pull out each brand by group and then um, have a separate bid per brand. But again, that doesn't really cover the variances in the products. Just within a single brand, you could have a brand selling a product at five hundred pounds, a brand selling a product at five pounds, um, and to try and have one bid to cover that effectively is just not going to work. Um, so I'll take you through a couple of things that we do that really kind of help our clients work more effectively and get the right results that they're expecting. Um, so the obvious one, or the most effective one, is to pull out by brand um, and then go right down to SKU level um, and really take it down to the individual SKUs uh, and, and adjust the bids accordingly based on that. That could be based on kind of credibility, uh, 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 based on profitability, uh, popularity, cash value of the product, but it really allows you to put a relevant bid on a per product level. Um, now, you can also further that by isolating best sellers within your range and being more aggressive on your best selling products um, to really give them the clear focus. What we often say, hear from people at this, this point is, I've got 5,000 SKUs in, in my Magento um, you know, uh, site, I've got 10,000 SKUs, how do I go to that kind of granular level? Uh, the answer is actually you don't actually have to. Um, you can you can use what Google have provided. Sorry, you can use what Google have provided um, by using what are called custom labels. So you can create your own groups and subcategories. So, for example, you could categorise groups by types of products, and then maybe categorise it by margin as well. Combine the two, and that will allow you to provide one bit, one bid that would cover a group of products effectively, without having to bid, like, bid on individual SKUs. Someone wants to uh, clean it on to pretty. Uh, Effective, um, ultimately, what, what, what I'm trying to show you is that the, the taking the time to be granular where Google are giving the opportunity to do so makes a real difference. Um, we recently took a client on where they were, they were working at the, the kind of top end um, of things where it wasn't granular enough. We took it down to kind of skew level, to product category level. Um, and within a couple of months, we saw these kind of results. 
throughout the shopping campaign. So we saw a 27% increase in click-through rate. Uh, we saw an 82% increase in conversion rate, a uh, 40% increase in conversions. But more importantly to me is that we saw a 55% reduction in CPA. So not only re significantly reduced costs, we increased the sales as well. So. Okay, so some really useful tips uh, there from Oliver of how you can be more granular with, granular with your approach to shopping, shopping campaigns in particular. Um, just interested to know, uh, more, more so for the, from the developers in the audience, who here, who here is more responsible for the front end side of things or what the user gets to see or who's interested more in user experience? One kind of. <laughs> Two, three. Okay. So um, I, I think it'd be a bugbear of all, even from, a, from the development team point of view, because you could be unfairly criticised sometimes by the performance of the website when there's other things that are at play that are maybe having a more detrimental in, uh, impact on what's actually going on site. Oliver's explained some really interesting points there about how you can make sure that that traffic that's coming through is, is producing the best return on investment. But ultimately then, when, the, when that traffic comes through, what are you going to do with it? Where's, where's that traffic going to land? And these are the types of things that really can make a difference with e-commerce in terms of the overall uh, you know, performance of the, the account itself. So. I'm going to give a, an example here of a, a couple of one, one client that we've worked with in particular. Um, and the search query that the users uh, put in here is barber men's wax jacket. So it's a, still a fairly generic term. Um, but if I was to go through Google <coughs> Shopping campaigns, you'd typically expect to land at a page that's something like this. Now, while it looks okay, you know, I've got a good product image, uh, there's a sale price on there, I've got an add to basket, there's some other sort of uh, calls to action in terms of arguably free delivery you're still not giving me an awful lot of choice because I've searched for a barber men's wax jacket and you're only giving me one option and I need to see more than that. So what can we actually do about that? Well, there's a couple of things that, oh, sorry, skipped ahead. Um, we usually see that bounce rate based on that is around about 70%. In some cases, I've seen it at 80%, which from a, a shopping campaign point of view, you know, if I see bounce rate at 80%, I'm thinking that there's actually something wrong with the page. Now, I could be unfair on a, you know, talking to the developer at that point by saying, hey, what's wrong with this page, the bounce rate is 80%, it must be something that you've done wrong. Well, that's a little bit unfair because I'm sending the wrong traffic to it in the, in the first place. So what can we do about that to, you know, to help the, uh, the marketeers speak with the developers as well? So there's a couple of options, a couple of things that we do at Space48 um, in terms of either manipulating the feed to send generic search traffic through to listing pages. So if I've, if I've made a generic search term of Barber Men's Wax Jacket, and you take me through to a product listing page like the one on the left, just a, either a subcategory page, um, you're then giving me eight options, which, which is much better than the starting point. Um, secondly, you could take me through to a, uh, a product page, which again is giving me more options uh, in terms of additional products that are available on, on that page. There's maybe a third option to this as well, and something that we've had a lot of success with over the course of the last few months in terms of personalization. So this platform's available like Nosto, for example, which plays really nice with .mailer. I'll give them guys a few plugs tonight. Oh, I should be getting free pizza or something. Um, so personalization in terms of product pages works extremely effectively as well. Um, and what we see by making these subtle changes is that bounce rate will typically come down to around about 30 to 35%. And if you get it right, you can maybe bring it down to 20 to, sorry, 25 to 30% in really good cases. What does that mean? Well, it's going to provide a better user experience, which is going to make you know, more people happy. Uh, increasing conversions and a reduction in CPA as well, which at the end of the day is going to leave the people who are uh, you know, responsible for the purse strings much more happy and make everyone's life a little bit easy. Okay, so there's a couple of tips regarding shopping campaigns. Uh, what we wanted to do now is talk a bit about standard PPC activity. And um, what I wanted to touch on was about uh, positional bidding strategies. Um, very often when we have clients speak to us regarding the PPC activity, <coughs> they've got a lot of pride about where they want to be. They want to be above the competitors. They want to be as, number one as often as possible. Um, and that's, that's not necessarily a bad strategy if you've got a pretty big budget, but more often than not, PPC is getting more competitive. And not every client has got that kind of infinite budget to always be at position one. Um, and not only that, what we've discovered through in interrogating the data and being a little bit more analytical is that you don't have to be position one to get the best um, ROI. Um, so we took some, some, some data from a client um, they were currently very aggressive in terms of position one, um, really kind of focusing on getting that, getting that position more frequently. We looked into the data, did some work to reduce the average position, um, and then as you can see here, so, I mean, obviously the average CPC is going to reduce, but what was surprised us a little bit is actually the click-through rate and the conversion rate both increased, 
um, obviously reducing the CPA significantly. So essentially, by bidding for a lower position on average, they got more sales at less of a cost. Um, so what we tend to get asked when we show this kind of data is, how, how do you do that for the whole account? And that's pretty much through automation. Um, there's a couple of ways of doing that. Uh, first of all, you can use AdWords scripts. It's quite, <coughs> quite new to AdWords nowadays, um, and it's still kind of relatively new to the system where a lot of people aren't using that significantly in the marketing side of things. Um, and so there's something more simple than that, which is automated bid adjustment rules in AdWords. You can simply build your own rules, um, set the parameters down at keyword level to determine what position you want to be, pending you've done the analysis to know what whereabouts your sweet spot would be, to ultimately generate them kind of results. Okay, um, and the, the, the final point for the evening, really, um, sorry, the final point for the evening, just a, a whistle-stop tour of um, ad extensions and the impact that that can have on mobile, some pretty basic stuff that a lot of people get wrong, believe it or not. So, uh, it's, this is a, a desktop ad, uh, and what we're looking at here in the ad in terms of what's highlighted, um, the call-outs in the first instance really are uh, calls to action, so how are people actually using those? We see that people typically use those as across the across the account, so they use them at quite a generic level, um, use sort of free delivery, free returns, that kind of thing. Now, whilst that has its place, if I've got a search query that's perhaps down uh, an ad group or a, a range level or a product level, it's much more relevant that you give me clear calls to action, key reasons why I'd actually buy that product. There's a reason why someone's searching for that, and give them some more relevant granular information to allow them to click through better. Um, Second point, you know, reassurance. I think we all shot with reviews. Uh, I'm not sure what the actual percentage is in terms of how, how much it actually helps conversion, but it's significant. It really helps with your, your, your standard PPC ads as well. And there's some uh, product ads that are, product reviews, sorry, that are going to be coming through to PLA shortly as well. We've seen Google certified shops popping up more and more also. We've got a couple of clients that have already uh, implemented that. It's been really successful, to be honest. So if you're anywhere connected to this world, I'd, I'd certainly go and nudge the person, or, uh, or if you are the person, make you know make sure you're, you're getting on board with uh, this from a reassurance point of view. Uh, and finally, uh, site links. Take the same approach. Be, gra be granular about it. Don't give people generic information. If they formed a, if they performed a certain search term for a certain product, give them relevant information about that product. So, if it's within a range, maybe give them the, all of the range, all the products that are actually available. Give them the best seller within that product within that product range, make sure it's again relevant to them. Um, and potentially at that point even give them some complementary products as well that, uh, that are going to you know, help assist them throughout their shopping uh, experience on your site. Um, so um, ultimately what's that going to do, you know, being more granular, is it's going to give you a better click through, click through rate, ultimately better conversion uh, and a better return on investment. Um, and then whilst we were talking about that and ads specifically, we started thinking, well, what else could we share with you this evening that's maybe more relevant about uh, mobile ads? Um, you know, mo mobile's becoming more and more pre uh, prevalent, obviously, people are using it more and more. So um, we just wanted to share with you, um, you know, what, what would happen if we were just following what Google was telling us to do. So Google was saying a mobile ad that we should, have, we should be using call extensions. We took over account, an account around about, I think it was about six or eight months ago now, that we were using um, call outs, uh, sorry, the call extension on mobile ads. Um, as you can see here, by using that, it was actually putting the uh, phone number as the title of the ad. It's not particularly compelling. I don't really want to click on that ad. Um, it's also using the call out radio button in the corner, which is taking quite a lot of real estate when it comes to the ad itself. So it's, it's using up valuable ad space. It's removing the call extension, uh, sorry, it's removing the uh, site links, um, reassurance factor, etc. It's removing the, all the stuff that we do actually need to see. So by just removing the call extension, that's all that happened. So it's a quick tip, it's not, it's not groundbreaking, but the kind of difference that that will actually make, you know, you've then got a good title, you've got the reassurance factor from reviews, uh, you've also got Google certified shops in there as well, that's why I'm saying you should look at it. Um, uh, site links as well, obviously, and, and the call outs, you know, it's a much better ad. Now, by making that one simple change, the impact that that had on the campaign that we were doing at the time was a 77% increase in click through rate, 98% increase in clicks, 18% increase in conversion, and 134% increase in uh, conversions themselves. So, you know, quite, quite sort of compelling numbers there by making one very simple change. Um, Google would, would tell you that you should include. 
um, the call extension on mobile ads. Now, I do think it's got its place if you're doing lead generation, then yeah, it's got its place, but in e-commerce it's different. You know, people want to go from the mobile and they want to continue on that shopping experience. Don't, don't take them out of the mindset of, uh, of, of making a sale when they're, they're so far down the line. Okay, so that, that's, uh, that's our four key tips really there, but I wanted to share a few other things with you that, to think about really, being in a more granular mindset, hopefully. Um, and, and looking into your PPC accounts or passing information on to people who do manage your PPC accounts <coughs> and looking at the kind of data that, show, that works for any time of day, day or week bidding strategies is the strength of times and days that you can uh, maximise, is the weaknesses that you can minimise. Um, obvious one with location bid adjustments, are there areas which that you can obviously promote and, and, and maximise further, are there, are there areas which just don't perform for, for your account and then you can take that out of the equation or minimise the impact of those. Mobile strategy, John's touched on that, it's going to be important going forward. And then last one to touch on is the ad customizer. Um, that allows you to put um, dynamic content into your ads, sort of like sale, countdown timers, things like that, and they have some real good effect uh, for our e-commerce clients. So just a summary now, I guess, from John. Okay, so um, just a quick summary then, uh, what we covered this evening. Um, Google Shopping was sort of one side of what we did with the first couple of tips. So Oliver started off with um, you know, taking a more granular approach to your shopping campaigns and making sure you you're spending, spending your monies as wisely as possible there. Uh, I then touched on landing pages and how best to use those landing pages to get a better conversion on the, uh, the, the overall campaign. Uh, we jumped over into standard PPC ads. I thought that tip number three is probably the most relevant point in terms of any of the developers that we do have in the room, to go and speak to the marketing team, to say we do actually need someone in the marketing department that can code. All right, it's not that complicated for, for some of you guys, I'm quite sure. But there is an area there where the two, there is crossover between sort of two, two teams within the business or within, within a, a, larger, a larger scale team. Um, go and ask them the question if they don't know, maybe to read up online and see what, see what more you can learn from it because there is a uh, benefit that you can provide there. Uh, and tip four, uh, I just covered off ad extensions and the impact that that's obviously having on mobile as well. Just make sure with all this though that you test, analyse and refine. It's not necessarily a one size fits all. Take a unique approach to each of the campaigns. Um, so, so yeah, um, that's us. Thank you very much for your time this evening. Thanks for having me.